Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, my sister, Reverend, for those kind words. And thank you for welcoming us as Life Ministry Uganda. We are very grateful that we are here to continue to proclaim God's message. Yes. Uh, my name is Alan Motatina, as she introduced me. And um, Mr. Mutatina Francis is here with me. Please come here and I show off the world. <laughs> yes, you know, someone told me that in, uh, in journalism they talk about bad things. But to want to tell the world, you know, we waited here, so my husband remembers where he stood. <laughs> yes, want to tell the world that there are good marriages outside there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we've been happily married for 21 years. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much, yes. Um, if someone has loved you for over 20 years, really, don't you need to show off? Yeah. Oh, please. Even one day. Yes, it is God's grace. It is God's grace. It's been God's grace that the Lord has brought us this far. We are talking about a cleansed family. This, that's what we are talking about. Yes, and um, God has called us into missionary work together with my husband, where we have served for over 20 years. Um, I think my husband 22 years ago. And we continue to serve him in his vineyard. And as we continue to serve him, our love for family has grown. Our love for family has, has, has grown. And since 2005, we've been uh, involved in family life. Uh, at first, we were asked by St. Francis, then that was our church, uh, to be part of premarital counseling, where we have done it since that time. Even when we transitioned and you know, shifted into our house in Seta, and we no longer pray at St. Francis, but we have partly continued to do ministry there, and also the, the, the students that we ministered to while working on campuses, we felt it was very important not just to leave them on the way, because we saw most of them in relationships that were heading to marriage, and we thought it was wise as well to walk with them into marriage. And we want to thank God so much for the many that we have walked with into marriage, and none of them has divorced. We praise the Lord. If they have, we are not aware, but we thank God for that. Yes, and so talking about a cleansed family, and we're going to focus on First John 1 verse 5 to 10. And uh, I'm going to request my husband to read for me that scripture even as we start. But before that, let me pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this afternoon. Lord, we are here in your presence. We have come to proclaim your message. A message about cleansing the family. We know, oh God, that you are the one that can cleanse the family of all its dirt. Lord, we call upon you this afternoon that you would visit every family in this nation, back in our villages, in urban centers, that you would visit every family, that you would deal with everything that is not right in families, O oh Lord our God. This afternoon, Lord God, we pray that you use me, O oh God, that you bless your people, God, that your people will listen to your word, that you would cleanse my lips to say that, that you have only land that I would speak, O oh God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that I would decrease and you increase in me, O oh God. That, Father, only your words will come out of me, O oh King of Glory. Holy Spirit, minister to your people here and online, O oh King of Glory. I pray that that family, O oh God, that is at the verge of, 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 of breaking, the Lord will touch that one family, God. Because we know that one soul saved in heaven, there is this celebration. And so I pray, Heavenly Father, that that one family, Lord, today you will visit them and you will touch them, O King of Glory. 
I pray for that one person in a relationship that is at the verge of committing suicide because they have been left alone. That father, you would visit them. That father, you would release them from that bondage of, of rejection in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit families this afternoon, O oh Lord. Young and old, visit them, Lord. As I prepared this message, the Lord reminded me that they are older couples. Later in the years, in their 50s, in their 40s, in their 60s, retired, at home, bored. They have nothing to do, some of them. I pray, Father, that they will not be a forgotten lot. That they will feel like we are here, nothing much we can do. But they will use their time to serve even when they are still at home. I pray, Lord, that you would minister to them, O oh God. We thank you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I mean, thank you so much. So, Ms. Amtatina, if you could read for us those five verses. First John, chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us, all our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Thank you very much, Ms. Amtatina, for reading for us that scripture. As I was preparing, I, I tried to define these two words. This first word, cleansing, or cleanse, and it means something that is done thoroughly, done very well. And then when I came across this word thoroughly, I so, thought, oh, that's another one to define, another word to define. And I think for me that was very captivating. And uh, it means that it is an activity or an action that is done very carefully and in a detailed way, so that nothing is forgotten. And I thought, one of the words that I used when uh, we are being wedded is that we are going to do this carefully. Some of us who are married here and online, you could remember those words. You don't get into marriage carelessly. You get into marriage carefully. And for me, that word stood out so much. And I was asking myself, oh, so how careful have I been in my marriage, in terms of respecting my husband, in terms of honoring him, in terms of, of parenting our children, in terms of working with people in marriage, how carefully have I done it? That was a big question for me, and I have a lot of homework to do in that area. Yes, confession is good for the soul. <laughs> yes, I am, we have come to declare a message from God. Verse 5 talks about a declaration from God. And it says, this is a message we have heard from him and declare to you. So this is not our message, brethren. It is God's message to the church. It is God's message to all of us. And so I have, I'm going to talk about four things. And one is that in a cleansed family, there is no darkness at all. Rather, there is light. There is no darkness. And I thought about it as thinking when, even if you're in your own home that you have lived in for more than one or two years, if you switch off power, somehow you stumble and go knocking things. But where there is light, you won't go stumbling. You will know. Even when you have lived in it, somehow you might be knocking things because there is darkness. So in a cleansed family, there is no darkness at all. Rather, there is light. And two, 
In a cleansed family, we do not mix God with other things. Today you're here, tomorrow you're somewhere else, tomorrow we see a different, today we see a different person, and tomorrow another person. But how do we mix God? How do we mix God? A few examples. You come to church today, and tomorrow you go seek powers to achieve success. I was in town a few days ago, and I overheard people talk, and I was like, oh gosh. These people were saying, you know, it is lunchtime. I'm going, to f I'm going for that lunch hour. I think there are stronger prayers that side. Uh, I don't want to mention names because they were mentioning names. I would mention them, but I don't want to mention names here. So they were mentioning, at one time, I'm going for these prayers. I'm going for this. I think the other prayers are stronger than other prayers. And I'm thinking, oh, brother, you've missed it. Yes, you can access your God and you can pray. So we mix God. We pray. We go and seek for other powers. And um, <laughs> I called him aside. I told him, you know, uh, I've got this. I've done this. But no one laid hands on me to pray for, for me to get that. And one of them, I said, I have children. But no one prayed for me to get children. God blessed me. By the way, God blesses those people even who are sinners, like us. Eh? We are all sinners, but he has given us children. So I don't need powers from a certain guy to, be, to lay hands on me to get children. And he said, are you sure? And we talked other things. But another way that we mix God is that we come to church, stand before the priests here and the presence of many witnesses, and we are wedded. And tomorrow, we get another X and B and Z and add on that other woman whom you brought here in the presence of many witnesses. May God forgive us. In my own wondering, I have thought that, and I thank God for this opportunity to say to the world, since we come to church and we invite people to witness our weddings, my desire and my prayer it may be far-fetched, but I don't care. If people are going to divorce, let them come here or let them call us to another reception of 1,000 people and declare to us that we are no longer wedded and actually celebrate and throw more monies to us and we eat and we witness your divorce. That's my wondering. But I keep thinking, no, you call me. I eat, I celebrate. But when you're going to do the other things, you do it separately. That's my thinking. Um, but I pray that once people have come here, that they don't think about divorce, that like I have not thought about it in the last 20, I have not done it in the last 20 years. I may have thought about it, by the way, because I'm human, I'm a temptation. I'm thinking, Miss Amtatina, this thing, I really don't like it. Uh, I, think, I think I wish I would... Maybe he was not the right person. But those are temptations. Those are thoughts that can come to us. But when they come to us, we don't have to yield to them. Amen? Amen. The third thing is, let us stop telling lies, but rather live out the truth. I want to read that verse. Verse 6 says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. We claim that we're in fellowship with him, but we go on and tell, and tell lies. And the truth is not in us. So because we claim to have fellowship with Christ or walk with Christ, we must live out the truth. And it, he reminded me this scripture in John 8, 32 that says, and you will know the truth. Very good Bible readers. And the truth will set you free. Let me tell you people, there is nothing that is so pleasing, that is so um, peace-giving, like telling the truth. When I'm struggling to say something to my husband and I say it, I feel like something has been offloaded from my shoulders. For example, we have an appointment at four and I am late. Instead of telling him, have you sat with people in taxis and they are telling lies? They're in Bulgaria, they are saying they are at wherever. 
they can mention a place which is not connected to where they are, and you're thinking, my sister, that is, not far from, that is so far from where you are. How will you make it? And so for me, it has been an encouragement for me to speak the truth, and that way, um, I am understood, I am accepted that today I am late, please forgive me. Yeah? And number four, walking in the light helps us keep fellowship with one another. Isn't that beautiful? To keep in fellowship with one another? I tell you, even in a family between parents and children, I still have my parents, praise the Lord. Yes, my father is 89 years, he's turning 90 soon, and my mother is 86. Yes, they celebrated 60 years in marriage three years ago. Oh, <laughs> they, 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 they are still married. I, I look at them. But think about us now, the children who have also grown up and... We are also married and have children. My father has been with me for four months now. Imagine if I'm telling lies to my father, what are my children learning from me? And for me, that has been a learning ground for me. It's been a moment of, Alan, everything you do, just be careful. You know, children may not listen to what you're saying, but they do. They will do what you're doing. That's a sure deal. And sometimes we are caught in the action. Praise the Lord. And so for me, it's been a moment of learning. It's been a moment of slowing down and saying, okay, even when I feel like, uh, Muzay, this is not right. I want to slow down and maybe go to him and talk to him alone. Not just throwing words everywhere and anywhere when the children are listening and they are thinking, so, mommy, when you're telling us to respect you, are you respecting your dad? Because it is easy for me to say it, but not to do it. And guess what? They will get what I will do, not what I will say. Wow. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. Us who have children who are still growing in our families. But anyway, even if they are, they are out, even if they come back, you have to be a good example. So, if we walk in the light, Jesus is the light. I gave an example of physical light in our houses, but want to see for us what is that light that helps us actually not to stumble here in the world. So if we walk in the light, our light is found in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. So if we want to be in fellowship with one another, let us have Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. There's a, bl a blind preacher man whom I met many years ago on a mission. This man says that he's not blind. And I asked him, brother, you're blind. You even walk with that stick. You know that stick they walk with? He said, my sister, I'm not blind. I said, okay, tell me more. He said, you know what? I don't bump into bars. I don't bump into people's women. Tell me who is blind there. I said, okay, brother, I salute you. I agree with you. So, when we have the light of Jesus, we don't bump into certain things. And that brother was really right. Because he has Jesus Christ in his heart. That's why he doesn't go bumping into wrong people, wrong places, and everything. And I thought that was really, really a big point. And so in a cleansed family, the center is Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the answer to all problems in families today. Believe me, you. He is the answer. If we walked with Jesus carefully, you remember the highlighted word? Carefully. If we did our marriages carefully, if we raised our children carefully according to God's word, everything would be okay. But then, one will ask themselves, 
Why are believers experiencing the same thing that people in the world experience? Things like divorce, things like separation, adult, uh, adultery, witchcraft, mention it. Why are people in church experiencing those things? I told you one of them is mixing God. But one, it's because we've not made Christ a center and the Lord of our families. We have not made Christ the center of my life, the Lord of my life. One person explained to me these two things. You may be a believer and you have Jesus Christ in your life, but is he the Lord of your life? When someone is your Lord, you know like uh, in Uganda, when Kabaka says, this is not going to be done like this, everyone goes by that. So when the Lord Jesus Christ said, Alan, you don't do this. You abide by it. You don't do it. But have we made the Lord, have we made him the Lord of our lives? Or we say, yeah, yeah, I think he will understand. He won't understand. You have to obey. We have to obey him. Secondly, it's because we have allowed pressures of the world to get into our boats. And we slowly sink into the world. I tell you, if you're not careful, the pressures of this world can be too much. Many years ago, when we shifted into our house in Seta, um, our neighbors came, I think two years after, and they built their house quickly, quickly, finished properly and entered their house. For us, it was at a slow pace, but we were in our house. We are still finishing our house. They finished their house. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, part in me was like, eh, I wish these guys were not our neighbors. Meanwhile, we are the ones who gave them a clue of buying that plot because we were friends before. Like, eh, I wish these guys didn't buy this plot. You know? There was, there was that temptation of, eh, they have come, they have finished the house. So the pressure was beginning to take over. But I want to thank God so much that later I realized that, you know what, Alan, it is well. You will enjoy your house. You will finish it slowly, slowly, and it will be finished. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our house is now beautiful, Amen. even when it is not yet finished. <laughs> the Lord is so faithful. But we are happy. What matters are the souls in that house? What matters are the souls in that, in that house? You know so much more what is happening in the world. That there are beautiful houses. There's, there's a young couple I visited like a year ago. And I was like, wow, the mansion. And I think it was a few months later. I had very terrible things about them. I was like, oh, okay, God, I thank you for my house. You understand? I'm not saying that powerful, beautiful houses are bad. But for me, it was, Alan, it's okay. It is okay. This is what God has given you. Enjoy it. Even when it doesn't seem like it is finished, it is very okay. Enjoy it. What matters are the souls in that house. Also, it's because we have not allowed the Holy Spirit to control us day by day. And Jesus wants us to surrender that other part in your life that you are controlling to him. What is that one thing that you are controlling and you're not willing to surrender to him? That he cleanses you. He wants to cleanse each one of us. He wants to cleanse me. When I accepted that I was a missionary, when I accepted that I was not in getting the money that those people were getting, that our house was going to be finished, the Lord calmed me down and we have built a house slowly and we are happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know what it is to you. It could be money. It could be your spouse. It could be children. People who have teenagers and above. You can have a very difficult child. My daughter this morning told me a young man who committed suicide because he has lived with depression just because he stammers, you know. And he told his family two weeks ago that he was going to commit suicide. I guess they didn't take it seriously. I think I would not take it seriously. You know, death is far from us. 
you know. Maybe they thought, oh, he will deal with it. And yesterday the man took his life. You know, a young man. What is that? Is, that, is it that difficult child? Everything. Jesus is the answer of the world today. But that is if we will allow him to be the Lord of our lives. Brethren, the family is at the crossroads. Very true. Very true. I am a counselor by passion, not by training. <laughs> I have my research here and there, but yes. But I talk with many families, I, many couples. I listen to lots of people. And you really, really wonder what we are up to, what's happening. I sometimes get worried about my children, that by the time they marry, what will be happening? But they will be fine, I'm praying for them. So Jesus wants to cleanse the family. He wants to cleanse everything. He wants to cleanse your relationships. And if you're here physically and online, surrender that one issue that you think is too difficult for you. Do you sometimes feel like this thing is too difficult for God? Yeah, you people, you're too holy. Me, sometimes I feel like, nay God, nay God, Kari, this one, this one. Eh, you know how you need like millions of money. Right now I'm thinking about my daughter joining university and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, she wants this university. Past semester they have told us this. Where is it going to come from? But excuse me, really? I keep saying, God forgive me. The Lord has provided millions to do certain things. It is the same God who will provide those other millions for what he's going to do. Hallelujah. You could be struggling with anything and you're like, God, I am at crossroads. It, could, it may not be your marriage, but it could be a house that you have tried to build and it is not coming to the end. Guess what? It will. Our God is a God of all seasons. As I come to conclude, anything that is holding you back, surrender to him. He wants to cleanse your family. He wants to cleanse your relationship. And I want to give us an opportunity. I want to pray with us. That one thing that is holding you back, I want us to pray together. Surrender it to God that he will cleanse, that he will deal with it because he is able. I pray that we humble ourselves. Let's close our eyes. In a minute, let's trust God for that one thing that has been holding you back, that has been holding your family. You're trusting God for your children to get married. And things are not breaking through, but God is able. At the right time, he will. Dear loving Father, we, we thank you so much for, for your word that is very clear to us that you are the one who can deal with every situation, that you are the light of the world. The Lord, when we, when we call you to come into our lives, when we accept you as our Lord and Savior, not only our Savior, the Lord, you will control our lives. We surrender every difficult issue in our families. We pray that you break every chain that is holding us back. We pray that you break every chain of rejection. We pray that you break everything that is not right in our families, Lord. That you release couples that have been waiting on you for children in the mighty name of Jesus. That you release husbands and wives to people that are waiting on you and they feel like it is taking long. Father, I pray that you release because... Marriages are started in you, not any other thing. That, Lord God, any people will not go to strange prayers and strange people to pray for them, think that they are going to get those breakthroughs. But, Lord, I will pray and trust you that, Lord, you will do it for them. And, Lord, I pray that if there is anyone here that has never given their lives to you, that, Lord, they will accept you as their Lord and Savior. Because it is in you that we find our victory. It is in you who is our light. Brother and sisters, brothers and sisters, those who could be here and those online, if you have never given your life to Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do it. In your quiet moment, you could pray like this, Lord Jesus, 
I need you. I've been controlling my own life. But today I surrender to you, and I ask you to come and be Lord and Savior of my life. Take over and take control of my life. Save me from all my sins, and write me, from, write me in the book of, of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.